Good morning and welcome to Lifeway Church on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Aren't you excited for what the King of Glory is about to do? Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 28, as the dawning of the resurrection morning came about, that the women of God were on their way to the tomb. And the Bible says there was an earthquake and the angel rolled back the stone. Amen. And as the women of God approached the tomb, the angel said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? For he is not here, for he is risen. Amen? And in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus Christ confirmed that. And he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Aren't you glad today that he is risen in power and in victory this morning? Let's worship him.
and shame Raise up my voice and lift up a praise I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord with everything that is within me I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord And when I think I'm done I'm gonna bless Him some more The weapon may be formed But I know that it will not prosper, no Surrounded on both sides But my God has already won the fight You trade joy, joy for my pain Set free 
In the name of Jesus, I have victory. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. In the name of Jesus, I have victory. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. In the name of Jesus, I have victory. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. In the name of Jesus, I have victory. She's back in the hospital and needs a miracle in her life today. And if you have a need by the uplifting of your hand today, I know God is here. Amen. Where Jesus is, anything becomes possible. Amen. Yes. Don't you love the Lord today? I feel his mighty presence in this place. God is about to do something miraculous. Amen. Among us. And let's call it together. As we bind together, please come forward and we're going to pray and something is about to happen in his name. Let's call on him, church. Lord Jesus, we call upon you in prayer believing today, God. God, we put our trust in you today, God, that you would move in this house, Lord. God, that you would move upon every name, God, on that screen, Jesus. God, that you would move, God, upon Marsha Rennick's behalf in Jesus' name. God, she needs a miracle today. God, there are people here today that need a miracle. They need a move of you in their life today, Jesus. God, I pray you'll go far beyond, Lord, expectation, God. I pray that you would honor faith in the building in Jesus' name. God, I pray, Lord, every uplifted hand, every voice saying, God, I need you. God, that you would respond, Lord, that you would meet us in a mighty way, God. There is power here, Lord, because of what you've done. God, you're no longer in that tomb, God, but you are risen, Lord, with power and authority and a name that is above every name. In Jesus' name, we call on that name, God. We pray healing would flow right now in these holders. We pray right now they flow back into these chairs in the sanctuary. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's it. The blood of Jesus right now can purify you, can heal you, can touch your life. In the name of Jesus, that's it. In Jesus' name, we're believing God today. There's nothing impossible with Him. All things become possible to them that believe. That's the word of the Lord today. That's what God has declared for us in this place. In the name of Jesus, let it be so, God. Let it be done in this place right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's it, church. Let's believe right now for the Lord. Let's believe God would intervene right now in each and every life. In Jesus' name, every uplifted hand, every word right now, you established, oh God. I believe right now, Jesus, that you are the God of impossibilities. In the name of Jesus, that's it. Let the cry of your heart go forward today unto God and let it return unto you. God will not return unto you empty, but God will return unto you with healing and strength and renewal. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that's it. Church, would you stretch forth your hands? Would you believe God for those in these altars right now? That God would move in Jesus' name. We believe right now. We agree. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank God arise in this house right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
We praise you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be so, God. Let it be so. In thy name, oh God. I said in the name of Jesus. Invoke that name. Speak that name right now. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, Jesus. We worship you. fresh flow of your spirit God that's it church in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Jesus I worship you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord mighty are you in this place Lord mighty are you oh God mighty are you oh God that's it that's it in Jesus name let it be done God your power be demonstrated, Lord. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Come on, church. Lift your voice in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I believe you right now, God. Hallelujah. Let it be so. Oh, God, by your spirit, Lord. Jesus' name. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We're going to pray right now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's pray. Let's lift your voice. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord, right now. We need you, God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen and come in healing virtue. Help us coming in Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you, my God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, we praise you, God, thank you, Lord, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, more than able, God, you're more than able, Jesus, we praise you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, would you clap your hands to the Lord, let's thank him for what he's doing in the building. God bless you. Thank you for praying. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to take up this morning's offering as we give unto the Lord. Ushers will come to you to receive of that if you choose to give today. Amen. Let's just pray and ask God's blessing over this offering. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you, give our lives to you this morning. God, thank you, Lord, for healing us and moving on our midst. God, we pray right now that you multiply the offering given. God, let us see the furthering of your kingdom, God, in this end time. And we praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. God bless you as you give today. And would you continue to worship with us as we continue to praise the Lord.
walked away from God for 16 years. In one moment of prayer, God began to restore in me the years that the devil had stolen from me. And I was able to be restored to the kingdom of God. Me and my family. Let me tell you, he is the God of possibility today. And what he has done for me, he will do for you. It's not the end of your story today, but you're about to rise up in a new in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord. Give me a little bit right here. Right here. Thank you. God is so wonderful. Why don't you look over and somebody, a little fist bump, just not too hard. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. Amen. There's somebody near you that you don't know. Children will be coming here in just a moment. I think right now the children are coming. So wherever they're at, God bless you. You may be seated. Just want to make you aware of a few things while they're coming. We want to welcome all of our guests. We are so glad that you are here. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful crowd today. And uh, the Lord is just so wonderful to us, and he helps us, and he blesses us. I was talking to... Uh, Sister Yvonne over here, and uh, she had been to the doctors. Many of you may know, maybe a few of you don't know, um, Sister Yvonne's been going through cancer treatment, and uh, it was a rather dire situation. But God has touched her body. She couldn't even lay in a bed without massive pain. And she was telling me that God has touched her. The doctors are saying, now, well, we don't even want to see you once a month. We would just rather you come back every two months now. So, that's good news. I want to let somebody know into this place today that if, if you're looking and facing a physical issue, that God is able, God is able, amen, to touch and to move in your life. If he did it for one, he can do it for any one of us, right? Praise God. And we're just so thankful for that. We're glad and we love our children today, and uh, they're getting ready to sing and to, let's make sure they get it all in line, make sure they're spelling the right word, okay? So I'll give them just a moment more. Um, if you're wondering how that you can be a part of Lifeway, number one, you just show up every Sunday. We'd love to have you here. Uh, amen. We would. If you got a chance when you were coming in, you got to meet some folks, and they were uh, hopefully just smiling. And if you need, in, if you're in need of a good dentist, just ask one of our uh, our welcoming team, and um, 
they will help you with that. Let me just make you aware of a couple of things. Today, for the youth and for the children, there will be a special egg that will be amongst the, uh, the ones that will be given out. Now, there is no special designation for this, these special eggs, but for the children and for the youth, there are two special prizes, okay? And uh, you won't want to miss that. One of them for the youth do we have it? Yeah, it's back there. It's an iPad. We got an iPad for the for the youth. So there's one special egg, but there's no special designation, okay? So it's not a big giant one. So if you see a big giant one up there, be careful of that. An eagle might have flown over and dropped that egg. So <laughs> uh, and uh, for the children, for the little ones, there'll be something special. Look at them. Aren't they just so cute? I'll get out of their way here in just a moment. And then for the adults, as you walk out of the sanctuary, turn left. And on the table there, there are some jelly beans. Okay? And if you can look at that and just make, it's really just a guess. Make a guess. Write your name on one of the cards. And then you can get, the adults can get signed up for that. All right? So... Um, we'll have to contact you on that because we'll have to look through those. But make sure your telephone number is clear, and we'll make sure that we, we identify you as soon as possible. So, because that's an iPad too, all right? So, um, we're just we're just wanting to bless folks. We want people to come to church and uh, really receive the greatest blessing that there really is. It's not an iPad. It's not a piece of technology. It's not a car. Even I know some people give away cars. The best thing you can get in your life is Jesus in your heart. And we know that today. So, <laughs> praise God. Why don't we just give one more clap? The children are coming right now to sing. And let's, let's worship the Lord with them. The gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. Revelation 118. The Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. 1 John 414. Remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Second Timothy two verse eight. Happy, Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Solid ground. 
was blind, couldn't see how you call me royalty. But in just three days you came and rescued me. to be young again. Did you hear what they were singing? They're no longer slaves. Amen. I hope they never know what it means to be a slave because that would be terrible. That would be terrible.
to be a slave of sin, to be a slave of so many bad things that happen in this world. I'm going to invite you to stand with me right now. And um, we're getting ready to dismiss our children. Hold on just a moment. Just a couple of more things. Um, our small groups will be starting soon. And uh, you, if you want to be a part of a small group, uh, this is the way that a lot of people begin their journey with Jesus. And um, that will be, you'll be able to see that announced on social media. And so uh, just if you haven't connected with us yet on social media, just look for the Lifeway Church Zanesville, and you'll be able to find us. And uh, our um, First Impressions team will be reaching out to you. If this is your first time and you filled out a card, we're not here to bug you, but we want to let you know what's going on here at Lifeway so that you can be a part and uh, just had someone today walk up to me and say, hey, how do, can I become a member here? And so we'll make sure that you, you, you know how to do that. Right now, as our custom is, we're going to dismiss our children to go to their classes. And I've been asked to sing a song, uh, if my accompaniment would come right now. Um, I just want to say what a wonderful day that it is. And we are cognizant of the time. And we know that, that you have special things planned. How many is going to eat today? Oh, okay, well, then we don't have to worry about the time. Nobody's eating. <laughs> well, I won't crow too loud on that. But I was asked to sing a song. You may be seated. I know we sing a lot of new songs. I like the new songs. I like the old songs. We have to have a, a good mix of, of what's going on. So if you know this song, and you want to help me sing, you're more than welcome to join in, okay? May the Lord bless you. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on. Mistakes I often slip. I'm just common low flesh and bones, but I'll prove someday just why I say.
and yet he loved me he whose glory makes the heavens shine so God, we love you today. We love you today. We love you today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I would like to invite you all to stand with me today. Praise God. I want to direct your attention today to uh, the gospel according to Mark. You can find the resurrection of Jesus in each and every one of the gospels, the first three, Matthew, Mark, Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels, and then John just kind of does his own thing. I think he thought he was a little bit special, and, uh, and that's okay. But today I want to read from Mark. Mark has a particular rendition, an account of the resurrection. And um, I know many people... We've got a cross over here. Thank you, Sister Berlin, for direct decorating that so well. But it's not about the cross. Because the utensils that were used for our Lord's death, they, well, they're not being used anymore. They're just kind of hanging out. And we don't celebrate and we don't worship a cross. We worship the risen Savior. Amen. Amen. So today I want, to, I want to minister to you on this subject, the empty tomb. The empty tomb. So we're beginning in reading in verse number one. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right. Good to see you. It says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone? Now, you got to remember, they didn't live in our day, and they didn't know that the stone was rolled away. When they were going there, they thought, There's going to be this huge rock that's there. It's been locked up. There's going to be guards, and we're just kind of here to do our thing, and they didn't know. And so they were just wondering, Who's going to roll away the stone? Verse 4, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. It was already moved. They're surprised. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted or afraid. And so he spoke to them, and he saith unto them, be not affrighted. 
You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. Those words must have seemed so foreign to them. He is risen. He is not here. What do you mean he's not here? He's dead. Behold the place where they laid him. Let's take a moment and let's pray right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you for each and everything that you've done. And God, that we pray that in the next few moments, Lord, that somehow, Jesus, that you would touch every heart in this room. God, those that are watching by way of the Internet, I pray, God, that you would touch every heart, every mind. And Lord, that you would help us to understand and know the message of today. God, we give you praise and glory for all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Everybody say, an empty tomb. Yes, Isn't that amazing? First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who helped put together today, this put today together so that we can all be here to um, worship and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Looking back to the events leading up to Jesus' resurrection, those things were nothing less than horrific. We've got to, first of all, be reminded what, was, what had just transpired, what had just happened. It was one of the most brutal documented deaths ever. It was certainly not a modern execution because... Today, it's, it's impossible. There's, there's nobody virtually. And so there are even companies that won't even, even supply the medicine that it takes for a, a, what they call a humane execution with lethal uh, injection. But it was, Jesus' death was angry. It was ferocious. It was barbaric in every way. We might ask, why? why would this be allowed? Well, it wasn't just a human thing. It wasn't just one of the most brutal armies and uh, dictatorships that had ever been on the face of the earth. It wasn't just the Romans. But there was another cause. Because God's order from the book of Genesis lets us know that the soul that sinneth shall die. This was God's order regarding sin, and it was very clear that the soul that sinneth shall surely die. You see, many people think that Christ's death was the Romans' idea, but I would submit to you today that that's not true because the Bible records that there would be one that would come that would die for the sins of many. It was Jesus Christ when he, was, when he entered into this world, he was born as the Lamb of God that would be slain for the foundations of the world and that he would pay the penalty for sin and for death. It was this Jesus that suffered this terrible death of not just the worst criminal in history. And in our minds, we might scan and see who is the greatest despot that has ever lived. Would it, would it be one of the Russian czars, dictators, Lenin, Stalin, not to mention more late uh, figures in history? Would it, would it be uh, Osama bin Laden or would it be Adolf Hitler? And, uh, I would say that Jesus suffered a much more cruel and a death that would be deserving of them. He died certainly that death but more it was more than it was a combination it was the cumulative effect of all of the people that have ever lived every lie that's ever been told every every couple that's been unfaithful to one another every murderer every every sin that's ever been committed the bible lets us know was put upon him Hopefully your load is going to be made a little bit lighter right now because the Bible says that God took our sins and He put them on Christ, on Jesus. I don't know if you knew that before, but your sins were, you, you, you are not responsible to carry them because God Almighty took your sins and put them on Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that He carried them all the way through Jerusalem down 
the Via Dolorosa. He carried them to an old rugged cross. And he was nailed to that tree. But as he was nailed in the flesh to that tree, you got to know something today, that Jesus nailed every one of those sins to that cross. Hallelujah. There's a reason to celebrate today. There's a reason to worship and to lift up His holy name because He is glorious. He is powerful. He is wonderful. Hallelujah. You see, the penalty endured by Jesus, and we need to name Him right now, He was the only sinless human. Let me back up on that because He wasn't just human. He was also God in a body, in human flesh. He was the only sinless man. All right. Now, ladies, this is your opportunity. I want you to look at your man. <laughs> I see some papers going up, some hands going up. Now, this is a good man that you're looking at. But he's not sinless. Sorry, guys. Now, now, man, you need to look at your woman. Just look. Don't say anything. I'm trying to help you here. Don't get in trouble, okay? He was the only sinless man. You can look up here before you get back in trouble again, okay? You see, this, 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 this one sinless man, was literally, when we look at him, we think, was he the only, he was the only man that has ever lived sinless. The only sinless person. In all of the people that have ever been born, he was the only sinless one in history. So how does the most powerful person person in history end up dying at the hands of some of the most tainted people on the face of this earth, the Romans. We might consider that question and we might just think, well, if this man was a sinless man and he was God, then why didn't he just, just kind of wipe the sheet clean and just say, I don't need you? Because really, I suppose if we would think about it in a selfish sense of, of just thinking that God really doesn't need me. God doesn't need you. But I want to say today that God does need you. And God does need me. The reason being is he created us and made us to fill a void. Did you know that? You see a lot of people in this day and age and they are suffering in loneliness. It's terrible to be by yourself. One of the most cruel things that, that can be done to a human being is to cast them into what they call the hole. They are there and they are in isolation and there's no, no contact. The only thing that they get is food and water, just enough to keep the flesh alive, but yet the mental psyche is not prepared, nor was it designed to be lonely. We were designed and made and created to be social creatures. Yet when God looked at all of the vast numbers of angels, God still looked around and He saw angels. When He created the earth, He saw all the other animals that had male and female. But when He looked at man, man had nobody. And so the Bible says, put him to sleep opened him up, took a rib out, and with that he created woman. And he removed the loneliness. I want you to know there is a type that is fulfilled there in that God Almighty looked around and he realized he wanted somebody that would be made and could be in his image. I don't know if you understand this. Because I think we, we, we skip over this part too soon. But you know what? We are made in the image of God. In other words, there will be times when you will become lonely in your life. 
And that's what it is to be like God. But God was not satisfied with loneliness, so he made you and me to fill a void in his life. We are called the bride of Christ. And the church has been definitely and succinctly made, amen, for a purpose that you are and become the holiness of God. Oh, hallelujah. That as. Mm. I don't know that I can effectively communicate today. And so I'm relying on God's supernatural power in this room to help somebody realize that you are more than just flesh and blood. You are more than the sum total of your, of your investments, of your bank account, or, or, the, or the properties, or the, the, the things that you hold, like a car or a truck. You are more than those things. You take and add all of those things up and they may add up to 100,000, maybe 50,000. Some of you may be millionaires and you don't realize it, but yet I want to say you are more than a millionaire. You're more than a billionaire. You're more than all the, the, the sum total of this entire world. You're worth more than that. And not because a president says you're worth more than that. Or not because uh, an economist or an accountant says that you're more than that. You're more than that because God said you're more than that. God said it. So how does, how does the most powerful person, God, robed in flesh... How does he end up dying at the hands of one of the most brutal armies on the world has ever seen? The Romans, I'll tell you how. He did it on purpose. On purpose. That's how. Because only that sinless person in history is not, he's not just a sinless person, but he's God Almighty. And the plan was to die from the very beginning, before man ever sinned, the plan was because he knew when God gave man the opportunity to be like him, he knew we would fail because there's not a one of us that can be him. But yet there are many people that try to be their own God. Oh, hello, just a moment. People try to be their own God, and they try to, to solve their own problems, and they try to complete themselves. But I want to let you know there's not a one of us that can ever satisfy ourselves. Try, try as you might to be the best husband and companion in the world. You will never be God to your mate. You cannot be. The plan was to, to die, was to die and to save humanity. But to every man alive at the time, it did not seem like salvation. All of his disciples looked and it, it didn't feel right. All of the evidence pointed just to another cataclysmic failure. You see, there had been many false messiahs that had come and they, they, they stood up and they said, follow me and I'll show you the way. But none of them lacked the, excuse me, none of them had the credentials. They lacked in the credentials. They did not, were not able to fulfill every one of the prophecies. But when Jesus came, the Pharisees fought him. The scribes scorned him. And when they looked at Look at Jesus' death on the cross. His disciples, they ran in fear. Only John was left behind. Peter stood back, warmed himself by fire, and a little girl walked up and said, said, you're one of them, aren't you? And he said, no. And, oh, I know you are. I said, and the Bible says that he cursed to prove that he wasn't. We are guilty by association. When we come into the house of God, God sees us and the devil sees us and he doesn't like us. But when they looked around, when all these disciples that had followed him now, some for three, three and a half years, the Bible lets us know that as they looked around and they saw when he died, uh, surely from afar they looked and they saw his, his head fall down. It must have seemed like the greatest defeat in their life. And when they woke up the next morning, they were in stupors. They didn't know what to think. They were hiding. 
The Romans were looking for them to kill them. At least that was their thinking. And they thought this is the worst thing that could ever come upon me. No, that came upon us when we were born. So it looked like another failure. It looked like just another nail in every person's coffin. That is, until resurrection day. When the only sinless person's eyes laying on a cold stone slab, his eyes snapped open. His heart started beating again. And Jesus sits up, yawns, stretches, stands to his feet, and walks right out of that grave. And when he walked out of that grave, he left behind the most special gift the world has ever received. And that would be, drum roll please, an empty tomb. An empty tomb. Now before we get too carried away, I just want, to, just want you to consider just for a moment. Empty things do not mean much to human beings. How many of you brushed your teeth this morning? You didn't pick up an empty tube of toothpaste. What good is that? You brush your teeth. Yeah. And what's left behind? The stink. Sorry. We dispose of empty things. What value is an empty pop can except maybe a half a cent if you get enough of them? Empty can cans and boxes that contain food. We don't buy food in the, in the grocery store for the box or for the can. We buy it for the contents we cook it we consume it some things empty things we clean like empty coffee cups sister henderson like empty plates we clean those why? Because we want to reuse them. But who wants an empty grave? Some th empty things we, we fill back up. Like that empty coffee cup. Clean empty coffee cup. Or like a fuel tank. If you let your fuel tank get too low, guess what? You're going to be walking, calling a tow truck, or a refrigerator. We could clean a refrigerator, and we can fill it back up. Or how about this? What about your empty stomach? But there are not too many empty things we either do not dispose of, clean, or refill. Because... Empty things are not powerful in and of themselves. Rockets, airplanes, cars, trucks, plates, bombs are powerful when they are full. But when they're not, they're very useless. They don't mean much. Empty graves are, are really special. Think about an empty grave. Most, most graves are not, actually they're not prepared until they're ready to be used. Um, that's just, you just don't go to a cemetery and walk through and find a bunch of holes. 
What are these holes for? Well, you know, people are dying every day. And we just thought we'd build, we just thought we'd dig 100 graves. Just be careful. They'll fill back in. They'll fill with water. And it's like, you're being kind of morbid today, Pastor. I'm just trying to make a point. So unoccupied graves really aren't powerful either. Neither is a grave that is occupied. But a grave that has been occupied and the inhabitant is not exhumed, but he leaves on his own power. Now that is special. That is powerful. And every other power word in every language that you can think of, that is what an empty tomb is all about. They are not. There are many that do not value empty things, but to a person that needs power in their life, to a, pow- to a person that's struggling with a health issue, with a, per- a person that's struggling with a, with a loneliness issue, to the person that is struggling with an addiction in this world, I, I want to let you know today that an empty tomb means Everything. Oh, hallelujah. You can find hospitals full of doctors that cannot fix cancers, that cannot fix neurological issues, that cannot fix many of the things that happen in these bodies. But an empty tomb can heal. An empty tomb can come in your life when you have no hope. And he can say, you know what? An empty tomb shows us the way. It shows us the way. An empty tomb means everything. Why? Because hurting people are empty. The problem is that we as human beings turn to what, what is familiar. We turn to earthly things. We turn to tainted things in this world to ease the emptiness in our hearts. But I want to introduce you today to an empty tomb because it's not just an empty tomb that I want you to look at. But the empty tomb leads you to an investigation to find out who is the one that got up out of this grave. Who is the one that in the face of all obstacles, in the face of all the world and the devil and anybody that would want to try to destroy an empty tomb leads us to Jesus, to the one that can help us with every situation. Listen to me. There are no hopeless situations. Miracles are still possible, even today. That no matter what you're going through, if you could call on God today, I'm telling you, God is already reaching for you. His hand is already extended. He's already came out of the grave. He's already... Oh, Lord. Let me say this today. If God can empty out a grave, then he can take care of your situation. The problem these days is that society has drifted so far away from God. People are cynical. They've been, they've been taught by unbelievers through television, Internet, magazines, newspapers, our very colleges that we support with our taxpayer money. And we're being taught that we can solve our own problems. That if we just buy the right combinations of chemicals, we can induce them in our bodies at at the right rate, we can somehow find happiness, but I want to let you know, there is no real happiness in the things of this world. If that were the case, then please tell me who can open their own eyes, stand to their own feet, and walk out of their own grave and never return. 
all kinds of good programs out there, and I'm thankful for programs. But the, many people still end up in the system, and you know what I mean by the system, the penal system. Thank God, Brother Shane, that you're still able to go into the jails and to minister to people. And this last Monday night, you had three men receive the Holy Ghost for the very first time. They found Jesus. And one of them's here today. Let me tell you something. God is a way maker. When you might not think that you can go anymore and that you've come to your last step and that you're at the end of the line, the end of your rope, I want you to know that there's a God, amen, that can come in your life and let you know, amen, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how you failed. It doesn't matter what obstacle is before you. Jesus loves you, and he will fight for you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. But he will partner with you and show you that whatever is your worst situation, he has the power to deliver you. And that there is was, there was nothing really wrong with your life. Anybody ever messed up before, get in trouble? Anybody ever had those red and blue lights or whatever they are shining behind you? And you're pulled over and you're busted. Wow. And there you are. And you know you're caught. And the kind gentleman walks up and it's just, I wish they would just come up and be mean. Hey, big fella, license and insurance. I would feel better then. Then I wouldn't try to sweet talk my way out of a ticket. Just hand them over. Okay. This is going to cost you. Hmm. Wow. Well, okay. Here you go. I got donuts in the back. Don't say that. Don't say that. You're getting in real big trouble. But instead they come up and they're just so nicey, nicey, nicey. And you know what? They don't have the power. Now, here's what they can do. They can say, I will not give you a ticket. I'm just going to give you a warning. Thank God for warnings. You got to get an amen out there? Huh? Okay, so I'm not the only one in this boat. Yeah, Okay. So they can give you a warning, but you know what? They cannot make it like the offense never happened. If you were speeding, you still broke the law. If you ran into somebody, you still ran into them, and your insurance has to pay. Or you have to if you don't have insurance. They cannot remove the offense. They might be able to remove the punishment or the corrective, whatever they want to call it. It's a punishment to me. They can't remove that. But you know what? When Jesus comes into your life and you ask him to forgive you of your sins, you know what he does? He doesn't just say, okay, no, no more ticket. No more hell for you. No more lake of fire for you. He doesn't just say that. It's more than just removing the penalty. But he comes in your life and he does something so very wonderful because a process called justification. He makes it just as if you never sinned. But let me go a step farther because it's better than that. Because he takes you, a child that was a sinner, and he brings you into. Hold on just a moment. How many of you are going to, going to, go, to the, go to the local jail and adopt a son today? Or a daughter? Just walk in. Give me the, hardened, the, the most hardened criminal you've got. Walk into the penitentiary. And you're going to pick one. I'll... I'll I'll take John Dillinger over there, okay? I'll take Jeffrey Dahmer. Where's he at? I'm going to invite him to supper. Just kidding. 
No. But you know what? That is exactly what Jesus did and does. Because he brings us, not only does he forgive us of our sins, not only does he wash them away, not only does he remove the curse and the penalty, no more hell time. He says, oh, by the way, I'm adopting you into my family. I, you're going to sit at my table tonight. I don't care who you killed. I don't care who you, what you did, what sin there was. Jesus brings you in. And more than that, the Bible says, as I mentioned earlier, that he makes us the bride of Christ. Ha, what one of you men would go to the prison to find your new wife? I guess I need to talk to the young, people, the young men now that are not married. Who's not married here today? I'll pick on some. All right. Brother Jeff. I guess we might need to check on Sister Kyla a little more. <laughs> Have you been to any prisons lately? No? But when you went looking for a lady... You didn't go to a prison. You came to the house of God. You know what? God comes in people's lives. And he said, you know what? I want a companion. I want somebody just like me. And so that's what the church is about. People that have failed. So today, before you walk out of this place, I want you to know that you're not just a criminal that's been forgiven. You're a child of God. You're the bride of Christ. You belong to God. And he comes in your life and he says, you know what? I'm willing to do anything and everything to save you. And so that's why he died on an old rugged cross. That's why he laid in a grave for three days. And that's why he woke up, got up, and walked out of that grave and left behind the greatest hope that can ever be brought to us, an empty tomb. As you stand with me today, I hope you walk out of here with, with a new value in your heart, a new value in your soul to know what God has really done for you he's so lovely he's so wonderful and all he asks that we do is repent of our sins just Jesus I'm sorry do you, you, you realize how easy it is all you got to do is say God I'm sorry Be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. This, this, this box-looking thing right here, this is our baptistry. We've made this front and center so that people can have their sins washed away. Because just like Jesus died and he came back to life, there is something about the process of giving your life to God that when we ask God to forgive us, it is like dying out. It is dying out to who we were. Who we were. I'm no longer the lying, cheating, stealing, little mischievous 10-year-old boy that God found. Man, I could cuss. You wouldn't believe it. I didn't even know what I was saying. I just repeated what other people said, my grandpa and all them others. I just repeated. I didn't know what that meant. Filthy words that I know today what that means. And it's like, why did I say that? But you know what? God comes in and he forgives those things. When I repent, I'm not that little boy anymore. Who knows what I could have grown up to be? I could have been the next despot I could have exceeded them all I could have been worse than Osama bin Laden but 
Jesus saved me. He died for me. And he came back to life. And he left me an empty tomb. A grave that I can look back and I can say, you know what? If he can do that, then he can save me. What do you think, Brother John? If he can do that, he can save us. Brother Dale, what do you think? If he can do that, he can save us. He can heal us. He can deliver us. He can give us hope. And all we got to do is look back to that. And today I was listening on, on a newscast and I heard someone say that, you know, the, that somebody had declared today as Transgender Day. And I'm thinking, okay. I think it was our president that did that, was celebrating Transgender Day. But, but here's, here, here's, what, here's, here's what somebody said. And I, I heard it and they said, they said, this is the day of Jesus' resurrection when he came back to life. Sorry, I had to bring that just that little tweak there in the end of, of, of our popular culture that's going on right now. But we got to know something. There is nothing as powerful as, as what Jesus did. And I'm telling you, you may never be accepted in this world. Do you hear me? Because it seems like it's all about acceptance. You may never be accepted in this world, but you know what? You'll be accepted in heaven. Just raise our hands just for a moment and just begin to love the Lord. God, I love you. And I thank you for leaving me an empty tomb. God, something so wonderful that it will never be replicated. Nobody will ever be able to reproduce. Oh, God. So today, if you have not experienced the new birth of Jesus Christ, and I know that in, in just 30 minutes, what, what, can, what can you tell me, preacher? Hopefully I've started something in your soul. God has planted a seed in your heart that will say, man, there's something to this. I don't know what it is, but I don't feel the same. There's something wonderful that's just come over me, and I, I didn't think I, I didn't think I could even live life hardly anymore. Maybe some of you have put a gun to your head before, and you thought this isn't worth living. I'm telling you, you're living a life without God. But when God comes in your life, you could turn the whole thing around. Because when He was on the cross. You were on his mind. Hallelujah. As we sing the song this morning, we'll take just a moment. I'd like to open up this altar. And, and if you would, please just come and gather around the front, each and every one of us. Would you gather around? Would you come up from the front just for a minute? gather around we're not going to take long the longer you take to get here the longer we'll be here I believe the Lord is here to touch somebody's life and you might be afraid and you might not understand everything you might just be here because a friend asks you to come but that's okay
Oh, can we raise our hands right now and just love him for a moment? Lord, I love you and I need you in my life, God. I can face tomorrow. If you want to find Jesus, I'll tell you where you'll find him. Enter into that old empty oh, tomb and just consider what he did for you. Can we clap our hands one more time to the Lord? Today is a day of celebration. And I would be remiss if we did not offer someone. You can repent of your sins today before you leave. You can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in water. And it's warm water. To wash those old sins away. And you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the evidence... Speaking in another language, as they did on the day of Pentecost. And I'm telling you that when you do, there will be a power that will come into you. The same power that brought Jesus back from the dead will come into your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. You want that experience? Just hang around here after, after the service. Brother Shane, myself. We will greet you here, and you can experience that before you leave. I want to remind you that today there will be a welcome, uh, excuse me, a farewell crew that will greet you. Please don't forget to try and find out how many of the uh, jelly beans are in the jar. Go enjoy your children as they find uh, the Easter eggs and celebrate with them and have a wonderful time today with your family. There will be no service tonight. Okay, no service tonight so that you can spend time with your family, okay? I pray God's richest blessings on you, and I'm asking God right now. I'd like to pray over you that God would just touch your life right now. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you today, and I thank you for each and everything that you've done. God, I pray that people right now, Lord, in this place, God, that you will have ministered to them and those that will watch in the days to come. I pray, Lord God, that you would show us the power of that empty tomb. That, Lord, it's not just another empty thing. It's not like an empty soda can, Lord. It's now just worth nothing more than to be tossed alongside the road. But, God, you provided us something more powerful than the world has ever been able to create. I pray, God, that you would touch somebody's heart today. Lead us into your light in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Greet somebody. Greet two or three for somebody you don't know. Please go greet them. Welcome them. Amen. Invite them back. We hope you'll come back and be with us next Sunday. 10 a.m. In Jesus' name.